Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I am a Western astrologer and Twin Flame channel. And this is a video about the energies for the new moon in Cancer on July 2nd, 2019. That also coincides with the solar eclipse on July 2nd as well. This is such an exciting new moon. Um, this is definitely one that will not be forgotten for a long time to come. This new moon comes alongside a solar eclipse. And when you've got a new moon and a solar eclipse happening at the same time in the same sky, what you're looking at is a double whammy for new beginnings. Anything new that has happened for you leading up to this eclipse in the last 30 days or new beginning following this eclipse in the next 30 days has a lot of significance for you in your twin flame connection. What I'm loving about this new moon um, is that it's coming on the heels of the Divine Feminine's reemergence here in the sign of Leo, the sign of royalty, the sign of the king and self-sovereignty. And it's also coming uh, with just after her conversation with the North Node here. The North Node being the direction of travel, the direction of destiny, the direction we're meant to be moving in with a new moon and a solar eclipse conjunct that north node that was literally just in conversation with the divine feminine this to me looks like a wake-up call to the divine masculine about who she is and what she brings to the table and the necessity of her energy in the divine masculine's life I love that um, for all twins who are working on uh, finding their way toward balance, finding their way toward self-sovereignty, finding their way toward getting out of negative cycles with one another. This energy just lends itself to, okay, we've got to behave in a new way. We've got to turn over a new leaf not necessarily together because she's out here in Leo by herself. Leo is uh, an individual sign. It's not a paired or a partnered sign. It's one for individuals, but it's through her coming back to her own self, back to her own sovereignty, honoring who she really is. It's through that process that his awakening really begins. Um, so this is exciting. For not just her and not just for him, but for what at this stage of the journey the Divine Feminine is really giving to the world. There's a way in which the Divine Feminine is under a spotlight at this time inside Leo. There's a way in which she is wearing her resurrected crown after having gone through some very difficult cycles last year with this configuration in Capricorn, she's now reemerged on the other side of that better as a result of everything she's gone through and conscious of who she's become now as a result of everything that she's gone through with that conjunction of the divine feminine to Mercury consciousness and communication here inside Leo. So again, I've mentioned this in other videos. There's likely some level of gentlemen um, or let's just say other masculine energies around the divine feminine looking for guidance, enjoying her light, wondering about how she radiates, feeling the call and the pull and the motivation to be in her space. Um, that's par for the course. I know many of you from having spoken to you, um, there is an internal part who, that part of you that says, you know, stomp my feet, cross my arms, but it's not my divine masculine. I get it. <laughs> Trust me, he'll be along. In the meantime, some of the divine feminine's work has to do with just being this radiant essence that allows all men to transform, not just him. And to walk in this world uh, with a glow and an energy frequency about her that transforms every room that she walks into. Note in the sign of the king, it is exactly as if royalty walks into the room the moment the divine feminine enters. 
heads turn, they nod in assent, they understand who she is. Those with business with her ask permission to conduct said business, and those who know they have no business in her realm quickly move out of the way. This is appropriate if you are noticing a lot of change and reshuffling of the people in your life. It has to do with the fact that you have reemerged at this time, Divine Feminine, and that particular reemergence is causing people to put themselves in right order in their life. They're trying to go let them. If they're coming in and knocking at the door, invite them in. Ask to hear what they have to say. Allow them to speak. You get to decide from your place of royalty, from your throne, how you will conduct with them going forward. I also really love for Twin Flames at this particular eclipse at the tail end, we've got Gemini here at 28 degrees. We've got Venus at 28 degrees Gemini. This is really, it's glue. It's, it's a pull and it's an attraction for both twins. In particular, the Divine Masculine being almost directly opposite, there's a pull toward the connection within the, the twin's communication. There's a pull toward being connected to the twin. Many of you have told me via email, you've told me in our reading time together, um, those of you who are Divine Femmes, you've told me, hey, you know, my masculine's reaching out, it's in this way or that way, or I'm going to see him for the first time since no contact, no communication, or uh, we have this opportunity to reconnect, how should I handle it given what's happened before? Trust that you will know how you should handle it. Um, and if you'd like a reading to understand better what your chart is asking of you at this time, what he's learning and how the two of you are meant to be communicating, shoot me an email. We'll set up a reading to look at your union chart, which is the day the two of you met. That's the day the two of you were reborn as one in this lifetime um, at chrysalismoon at gmail.com. K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com. I will say, many of you have also asked me, well, what if I don't have the exact date and time that we met? We can use the date and time of any significant first, especially if you are in a reconnection cycle at this moment um, after a separation, whether that reconnection began two years ago or last month. We can use that significant first to cast the chart of the cycle that you're in uh, for the union chart that we'll work with. So feel free to email me. Um, and if you're going, having the experience of the, you know, I mentioned this in a previous video, the union window has opened for twins. It opened, at, I believe, at the end of May, beginning of June. Um, there's just opportunity for more communication here as the divine feminine has reemerged into her power. Um, and again, like, there's a thoughtfulness to this, right? Because Mercury, Moon, Venus, they're all involved here. Mars is too, but here's, here's the thing. With the, all the benefics involved and Mars, it softens Mars toward an energy of motivation. Your energy is all about unconditional love. So find that energy of unconditional love. It's echoed here with Uranus, the divine, sitting here in Taurus, sign of fertility. Um, conjunct Vesta, which is all about that, which we consider sacred and holy. Also mirrored here with Chiron here in Aries, the sign of the self, initiations and new beginnings, Chiron being the healer. Really, this is about taking the love that you have for your twin that maybe your twin has not been able to receive. Maybe they have. Feeding yourself with that love and thereby increasing the light you have to give to the world. For the Divine Masculines who listen in, um, thank you for sitting through all of that. Uh, for the DMs who listen in, here's the Divine Masculine symbol here at 16 degrees Sagittarius, making its final ways the last two degrees of retrograde. It's going to go back to 14 degrees Sagittarius, before the Divine Masculine starts the progress, uh, process of moving forward through Sagittarius toward Capricorn at the end of the year. 
with this movement through Sagittarius, the journey that you've been on and the new beginning for you, Divine Masculine, has to do with understanding the significance and the importance of you stepping into your truth at this time. This may or may not be about your Divine Feminine. This may actually just be following the truth of your goals, your ideals, that which you want to create and achieve in this lifetime, and aligning your life, your thoughts, your behaviors, your relationships accordingly. If there has in any way been misalignment that's been called to your attention in the world, in particular in the world of work out here in Capricorn, or in the world of family, because either it's time to finalize a divorce or step up to the plate with kids or create appropriate boundaries with parents um, or siblings or cousins. If there's any energy like that in your world, this retrograde motion of Jupiter has been calling you toward the truth. It's been opening your heart, your eyes, and your mind to what is real and what you must do in order for your life to unfold with you in your full power as a divine masculine energy. Once Jupiter hits that final two degrees here, um, and it's already started the process, you're going to start to feel a bit of a relief at the second it goes direct. It'll still have to get out of the shadow period and move back forward to about 24 degrees Capricorn. But once it starts to move direct, what this new beginning is will start to become clearer to you at that time. So we've got about another two months, I believe, perhaps three months before Jupiter starts to move direct. In that time, the new beginning that's on the table now will be made plain as day for you, if it's not already, about what it is you need to start and be doing this time. So if you're not as a divine masculine feeling the new beginning upon you at this time, that's totally okay. Uh, we really want to see uh, Jupiter get to the point, that 14 degree point, where it's going to be even closer than it is now to being exactly opposite this eclipse point out here and this new moon point out here um, at 10 degrees Cancer. The closer it gets to that point in op opposition, um, what, sorry, uh, that's out here in Capricorn. The closer it starts to get to that, the more insights you're going to have about where you're meant to be going. That Jupiter ingress toward that 10 degree point that's right here, that won't be until 2020. But the further we move into this year, the greater the clarity about what's true for you is going to become. It'll be like watching a sunrise, how bright it starts to get over time. Okay, again, that energy for you is about truth. Truth for yourself. There's healing here, trying that out here at Chiron and Aries. Um, and then there's also this reconfiguration energy for all of us in the masculine sign of Capricorn. So let's not forget that, that in this sign we've got at 17 degrees Capricorn, we've got Saturn in the south node dancing, and they're going to be dancing all year long while Saturn's retrograde here. This energy is about a restoration of integrity. Anything that has been out of integrity in terms of work, family, relationships, and identity that's been causing tension in your life, this new beginning and this grand untethering that we're experiencing at this time with this eclipse, this new beginning is forcing us all to say, hey, it's time for me to clean this up. It's time for me to put an end to this make a start to that, close off these things that no longer serve, amplify these things that I know are going to serve me. So again, if you're slightly confused about what that might mean or look like for you in your chart, or you really want to hone in on, you know, making the next 90 days count for you, because it is such a fertile time to create new things given these eclipses, Let's set up a reading so that you can get the most out of these eclipses. I'm at chrysalismoon at gmail.com, K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com. 
and we'll take a look at that for you in your chart, uh, both for you and for your twin. What I have found through doing these readings is that understanding if your twin is backing away from you or exhibiting behavior that you don't quite understand, having a look at their chart will help recenter you in the seat of unconditional love so that you're really capable of removing any energetic barriers between you and them because you can see what they're dealing with and why they may not have bandwidth for the connection at this time. And you can have compassion for their choices, removing any mental or energetic blocks of frustration that may be occurring between the two of you, slowing the process. So real quick, I'm going to have a look at some of the Sabian symbols for this new moon. I'm also going to have a look at um, some of the fixed stars uh, for this new moon so that you can have a better understanding of these energies that are playing out for this new beginning at this time. Let's start with the fixed, uh, not the fixed stars, but the Sabian symbols. This is from Inside Degrees um, uh, by Elias Lonsdale. Take, I'll put a link to this inside of our description box below, but let's start with the Cancer 10 degrees new moon, right? So here we are, Cancer 10 degrees. Okay, a violent hailstorm. Great disruption serves long-term continuity. If you are a twin, you understand a lot about disruption leading to long-term continuity. Uh, by submitting yourself periodically to excruciating soul ordeals and severe tests and trials, you make sure that your destiny is self-renewing. You pull in, at these junctures, what is strange or removed from your own way of being by suffering the imposition of the dark stranger. You completely shake up all smug structures. What I love about this energy for twins in particular there is something going on here that I can sense it in my readings. I can see it in the way people respond to me as a divine feminine in the world. When I look at all the divine feminines I've read for, the divine masculines I've read for, what I'm noticing is that we are sitting at the leading edge of a conversation that the globe is having about unconditional love and what it looks like at every juncture, um, family, work, friends, relationships that are casual, relationships that are not casual. Our ability to stay in the energy of unconditional love and then the choices that we naturally make from being in that energy, it's shaking up what you could call smug structures. Those structures of, well, so-and-so is not responding to me, so I'm not responding to them. That structure of, well, he only wants sex, and that's the only way he knows how to connect. So I just can't deal with that, and I have to cut him off. The structure of the way that we were doing relationship included a lot of separation. And the way twins are being led and bound by the connection that they have to one another is forcing us to find a new way forward. Again, much of your life is keyed into enduring under onslaught, being able to form yourself into one who can encompass absolutely anything. This is the returning of the God fractal of divinity or the reactivation of it inside of you as a twin. Your capacity as a twin, as a manifester, is amplified through these eclipses and really knowing how to use them so that you can create that which you want to see on planet Earth is a huge opportunity in front of you. So again, if you want to look at that, let's have a reading, but let's continue here. The path indicated is neither chaotic nor is it random. What's happening isn't an accident, guys. It is sharply pointed to take on experiences and lessons that are needed to fully transmute the karmic consequences. Brilliant. I love this because there is, for everything that the divine feminine has gone through, everything that the divine masculine is going through now, there is a level of transmutation on behalf of the whole that we have been doing. 
our road has been as hard as it has been because not only are we transmuting lower feminine patterns among the collective at this moment in time, but backwards and forwards throughout generations in our families, in addition to backwards and forwards in time for the collective on all timelines here on planet Earth. This is why this is being shown to me. This is why some of the pain of being a twin is what the pain is. You are transmuting not just your stuff, but your family stuff and the collective stuff as you move through this toward unconditional love. You have a core commitment to tackling the hard stuff with a fury of intent that is just enough to make the whole thing work. I'm certain here that whole thing for us as twins means this, the mission of anchoring in unconditional love on the planet. Revealing that you can do the impossible if your will is singular and your inner strength to go the distance is solid and real as any obstacle and even more so. I cannot tell you what a powerful new moon solar eclipse this is for twin flames at this time. And I really implore you to find the way to make it work for you so that you're anchored in unconditional love, you're anchored in self-love, you're anchored high vibrationally so that everything that unfolds here from you forward is aligned with a timeline resonant in that frequency. The way this moment with these particular eclipses has been presented to me is this. There is a train. It is moving down a track. It has come to an injunction point where there are three different paths in front of it. Your vibration is what signals which path you are going to take at this time. So if you can do what you have to do to find your way toward being as high vibrational, self-compassionate, kind to yourself as possible, even if you are grieving, even if you are sad, even if you are in separation, allow, 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 love, 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 permission, permission, permission. This will get you toward that vibration of unconditional love so that you're on the higher track here. As twins, free will really is a big deal for us, more so than the muggles, I hate to say it. Um, I don't actually hate to say it. More so than the muggles, um, we're not really bound by the structures of love and relationship that the culture has imparted to us. We really have the opportunity with this particular eclipse and new moon to say, I'm carving out a new way and this is the way I'm carving out. So use that God fractal, kids. This is the time. All right. So... I'm actually going to skip the fixed star because this video is getting a little long, but if you want to have a look at the fixed star conjunct that new moon, you can. You can also have a look down here at the karmic cleanup stuff that we're doing in Capricorn. I'm actually going to real quick run to that because that 17th degree of Capricorn is where we've got the restoration of integrity to our paths at this time. If you haven't ever seen the etymology of the word integrity, Integrity isn't just about keeping your word and doing what you said you were going to do. Integrity is about making that which had a break in it whole again and complete again. Integrity is about coming back to wholeness. So at 17 degrees Capricorn, we've got Saturn, the harsh teacher, the restorer of integrity, talking to the south node, looking at the past for twins, not just this lifetime, but prior lifetimes. Remember I said we're transmuting forwards and backwards in time. Here's what we've got. A gold ring baked into a cake. Initiation is a secretive affair. Yeah, no kidding. Who, how many people can you talk to about your twin flame journey? It calls forth discernment and offers immense awakening. It is a narrow path stern and demanding. Everything proves illusory. The world becomes an empty egg. Yet the guiding ray is so pure. And if the tests are passed, exquisite self-realization is there. A reminder of what you've forgotten 
a vow or a promise reinstated. I mean, this is just so beautiful. This is like a commitment to staying on the path of unconditional love, regardless of where it leads. Something neglected and denied returning in the most startling ways. Again, I can't tell you I'm, how often I'm seeing this in my readings. Twins who have been in separation, there have been sparks now of new communication, new opportunities to come together, new ways to connect that previously weren't there. And that's a result of do, having done that karmic cleanup work. A fate-like feeling of get it now or get it later. Either way, it's coming. No fruitions in the outer, yet all is bright on the inner. Many of my people are telling me in readings that they are having full-on communication with their twin in 5D um, in really astound astounding and startling ways. If that's you, this is part of why. The two of you, many twins were put through a period of time that I think of as like a cosmic timeout so they can go figure out certain things in their life, download this new God fractal energy at five degrees Taurus into their physical body. That's Taurus, Uranus, the divine, the God fractal, um, divine insight, divine awareness, awakening, download that into their physical bodies without having their twin there as obstruction for that download. Now there's the opportunity uh, going forward through the end of the year for reconnection to happen with your twin uh, post that separation. So very fortuitous new moon. Like I said, I'm going to pause there. Have a look at the fixed stars if you like. They're very interesting for this new moon and this eclipse cycle. Also have a look at that video, the Capricorn Cancer New Moon for Twin Flames, Divine Prep for 2020. It explains the entire cycle because eclipses never, ever happen in isolation. They're always part of a much larger storyline. And only having this one video is like reading one sentence in the entire paragraph. You need to see the entire paragraph to understand where things are going. So again, if you want to look at this stuff in your chart, give me a shout at chrysalismoon at gmail.com. All links and the email will be below. Thank you for watching. Please hit like on the video if you're able. That will help it get it circulated so the twins who need to hear this message most will be able to find it. Thanks again for watching and listening.